हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल आई टी जे ओलम्पियाड एंड ए पी फिजिक्स विद अम्बरीश सो टुडे आई हैव ब्रॉट कंसेप्चुअल प्रॉब्लम मेनी टाइम्स स्टूडेंट्स कम अक्रॉस अ प्रॉब्लम इन विच देर आर कंसेंट्रिक स्फेरिकल शेल्स एंड वन ऑफ द शेल्स इज अर्थ और मे बी मल्टीपल शेल्स आर अर्थ एंड वी आर सपोज टू फाइंड द कैपेसिटेंस ऑफ द सिस्टम ऑफ कंसेंट्रिक शेल्स विद अर्थिंग इन बिटवीन and it comes uh, out like student get a very eerie kind of feeling when they uh, get see this problem and they keep wondering that how is it that battery whatever charge it is supplying it's coming back so uh, without much ado i'll uh, state the problem and if students want they can try it out or uh, if you are confused about this concept you can straight away look at my solution to the problem uh, this, this is the problem i've picked up from uh, shashi bhushan tiwari Uh, this is question thirty-two from capacitance. So, here's the problem: two concentric spherical shells have radii A and B. Write the capacitance of the system in the following cases: positive terminal of the battery is connected to the outer shell, and its other terminal and the inner shell are grounded. Okay. So we have concentric shells, and the inner shell uh, is grounded, and the outer shell is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. And then there are other cases. So. Uh, you can read it and you can try it out so i'll uh, take the cases uh, i'll i'll take the cases a and b and i'll leave uh, the case c and d uh, for your practice and i'll be giving the answer at the end of this video so let me consider the uh, part a of this question that is positive terminal of battery is connected to the outer shell and its other terminal and the inner shell are grounded so so i'm moving on to the solution so this is how the situation looks like so we have the Uh, positive terminal okay this is the positive terminal of the battery connected to the outer shell the radius of the outer shell is b and the inner shell radius is a and the inner shell is connected to the ground and as well as battery is connected to the ground and we are supposed to uh, find out the effective capacitance now whenever we have a battery we know that whatever charge the battery supplies the same charge has to return to the battery now so that's for sure that that's going to happen here also but the thing is we also have to satisfy the condition that uh, this shell uh, shell should have zero potential so if you take plus q over here and minus q over here obviously the potential here is not going to be zero you can check check that out the uh, because the, uh, if you take plus q over here and minus q over here then in the region from infinity to here the net field will be zero but then when you go from here to here there will be some work done and that's why this this shell will not be at uh, zero potential so we cannot just simply take plus q and minus q so what's going to happen here since uh, this charge and this charge are not equivalent opposite so wh where from will the rest of the charge be coming so we the battery is also connected to ground and battery can also accept some charge from the ground so we can see that uh, here due to constraint of battery it gets back a charge equal to the charge supplied by it and some charge exchange must happen between earth and the battery and uh, this is evident because uh, <coughs> the, as i said that uh, this doesn't ensure that uh, equal and opposite charges do not ensure uh, zero potential of the inner shell okay so now what i can see that since this is zero potential and i know that infinity also is also zero potential so i can as well model this as uh, infinity this this ground is as good as infinity so i can draw an equivalent circuit So what I have done, instead of ground, I have taken an infinite shell. Uh, I mean, at infinity, the shell of infinite radius at infinity, and it's also supposed to be zero potential. So, so connecting to ground is as good as connecting it to a shell of infinite radius, right? Okay. And now the situation like uh, looks uh, pretty much tractable. So now here, uh, this is zero and this is e, and I can see that there is one capacitor formed between the outer surface of B. and the infinity okay and another uh, capacitor is formed between the inner surface of b and the outer surface of a and therefore we have now two capacitors now we can see easily there are two capacitors and what about the potential differences so it, across the inner capacitor also the potential difference is this e and across the outer capacitor also you can see that this is zero and this is e so outer capacitor potential difference is also e okay so Uh, so i can now draw equivalent uh, circuit uh, through okay so what is the equivalent circuit so uh, let me call this uh, capacitance as cab between a and b and let me call this as cb infinity 
so then c b infinity and c a b both are connected between 0 and e as you can see from this okay so this is 0 and e and this is also 0 and e okay so this is the equivalent circuit you can see readily this is how the equivalent circuit looks like okay and now these two capacitors are in parallel so i have simplified the circuit this technique you use very often so i have represented this by 0 this point by e and this point again 0 and uh, this uh, and i have uh, uh, simplified the circuit schematically so this is how it looks like so between 0 and e, c a b also and c p infinity also and it's a circuit in parallel so therefore the effective capacitance is simply c a b plus c b infinity okay parallel combination and that you can now readily write 4 epsilon naught a b upon b minus a plus 4 epsilon naught b this is the effective capacitance so this is first method of looking at it now I can also have another method of looking at this problem how we can do it the second method we know that net energy stored in any capacitor circuit is half c effective into epsilon uh, into uh, emf ka square okay so half c effective e square is the net energy and if we know the stored energy then we can easily find the c effective okay so now how is the energy going to be stored so you, you know that by gauss law whatever the inner shell gets charged the uh, the inner surface of the outer shell should get the negative of that charge right so if here i get minus small q here it will be plus small q and similarly if here i have plus capital q so for uh, battery to be uh, neutral of charge so if here it is plus q then infinity should get a minus q so that battery is on the whole neutral okay so or uh, supply charge is equal to the received charge by the battery okay so now so now where is the energy stored so this is one capacitor between this plus q and this minus q is like one capacitor so what's the energy stored so since the potential difference across this is e so energy stored is half cab into e square similarly this is the other capacitor and uh, energy and across this also the energy stored must be what emf is e so this potential difference is e so cb infinity into e square and this should be equal to half c effective into e square so that straight away gives us the half c c effective is c a b plus c b infinity which is the same result okay so what's the key the key in this uh, method energy method is to watch out for the regions where energy is stored and wherever the energy is stored net energy stored must be half c effective into uh, emf square okay now for the part b i can again do the same thing in part b what was the situation now in part b the outer shell was earth and the negative terminal of the battery was earth and the inner shell was given a potential e relative to the ground okay this is how the battery connections are okay and again i am supposed to find out the uh, uh, effective capacitance of the system okay now here since uh, the outer shell is earth there is no potential difference between this shell and imagined sphere at infinity so this has zero potential and infinity shell also has zero potential that means what no field line no field lines are coming from infinity to here there is no field line uh, because otherwise there will be a potential difference between infinity and this so i can model i mean even if i take a shell at infinity there is no energy stored in this region okay or i can even draw an equivalent capacitor circuit again in this case so across a and b at the potential difference is e so equivalent circuit looks like this and between b and infinity potential difference is zero so i can say b and, and infinity are shorted to each other so this is c a b connected across e m f e so this is e and c a b is connected across e and the, the capacitor between b and infinity it is i have shorted it because the infinity and uh, point b both are at same potential okay and now you can see that this capacitor is hanging so effective capacitance is nothing but c a b so c effective is simply c a b so this is the uh, equivalent uh, circuit method and the other method is again uh, energy storage method so due to the zero potential in the outer sphere field outside must be zero as i told you and there is no energy stored in the outside region okay again half c effective into e square should be equal to half c a b into e square because this is the only region where energy is stored there is no energy outside okay so and this capacitance is cab so half cab into e square okay and plus zero so c effective is a four pi epsilon naught ab upon b minus a and in a similar manner using the similar logic i would suggest you try out part c and d of this question and these are the answers to part c and d so that's the analysis of the earth uh, concentric shell system capacitance 
i hope you liked the video and if you did enjoy this video please help me grow the channel by liking uh, uh, subscribing and sharing it with your friends as much as possible and keep coming back to my channel and i'll try to uh, bring uh, good quality content for all of you i'll try to work a little harder uh, thank you very much for watching